Hi, I'm Stephanie Magister, and below we're going to play the trans version of Where's Waldo? Except, instead of Waldo, looking for the trans characters hidden in the wide world of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But, since we've only got enough time to stick to one universe, let's check out the Spider-Man trilogy. Get ready to- Oh my god! At how many trans actors and characters were in front of you the whole time. The whole time? Yep, the whole time. Number one, Spider-Man Homecoming featured Seymour O'Reilly. Though not out at the time, trans actress Josie Toda portrayed Seymour O'Reilly in Spider-Man Homecoming. Let's take a look at that clip. F. Thor, marry Iron Man, and kill Hulk. Well, what about the Spider-Man? It's just Spider-Man. Did you guys see that big security cam on YouTube? He fought off four guys. Oh my god, she's crushing out Spider-Man. No way. Kind of. Ugh, gross. He's probably like 30. You don't even know what he looks like. Like, what if he's like seriously burned? I wouldn't care. I would still love him for the person he is on the outside. You don't know Spider-Man! Number two, Spider-Man Far From Home, featuring Tartha Corbin and Zach Cooper, friends of Penis Parker. Oh my gosh, look at those two. Tyler Luke Cunningham portraying Tyler Corbin was a featured extra, and Zach Barack portraying Zach Cooper played a friend of Penis Parker. Both were the first openly trans actors in the MCU. Looks like we're here. They're doing some renovations to the place, getting some upgrades. Oh, this is trash. That must be the concierge. Okay. Number three, Spider-Man No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home did not promote an openly trans or non-binary actor in the cast list. There is, however, a consolation prize. Andrew Garfield played an incarnation of Peter Parker slash Spider-Man who skips across the multiverse to help out the MCU. And if that's not a consolation prize, I don't know what it is. So, hold on. What am I saying? Is Andrew Garfield pansexual? Bi? Straight? Cisgender? Gender fluid? Hi, you cake buddies for damn sure an ally. In an interview for his role as a gay man in Tick Tick Boom, he clarified that he is open to any impulse within him, including if that impulse makes him the one person who doesn't break Jesse Eisenberg's heart, you know, in a movie. What most matters to Andrew Garfield is what he calls empathic imagination that priority led him to take roles like the trans character in an Arcade Fire music video. I'll include a link to that. This was way back in 2014, and trans singer Laura Jean Grace for the band Against Me had something to say about cis actor Andrew Garfield playing a trans actor. There's two articles, one from Pitchfork, headlined Against Me's Laura Jean Grace continues criticizing Arcade Fire over We Exist video, and then from Consequence, headlined Laura Jean Grace responds to Arcade Fire. It says main problem with the We Exist video is stereotyping, at least until, and then Laura Jean Grace made a tweet that said, just got done talking with Our Lady J about her involvement in the Arcade Fire video, her perspective really made me think about it differently. Hmm. And this is just like my opinion, but if you ever seen videos of Andrew Garfield and Jesse Eisenberg together, you understand that when Andrew says he's gay just without the physical act, that confession is as queer as it sounds. Because let's not forget that we have more than one orientation, sexual versus romantic. And while Andrew Garfield says he's gay without the physical act, that's never stop people from discovering new impulses. Asexual people fall in love. Aromantic people find platonic life mates. Sometimes they even are, uh -uh, but sometimes not or never. If my trans experiences have taught me anything, it's that gender and orientation are only useful labels until they aren't. What I care about is L-O-V-E. Find someone who looks at you like Andrew looks at Jesse, especially when you're looking at yourself. <laughs>